Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I've got the tank review for the brand new British tier 6 premium heavy tank, the A43 Black Prince prototype. Now, initial impressions of this tank. It's a Black Prince, but at tier 6. And you think, oh, a tier 7 at tier 6, that must be great. Well, it struggles a little bit because it is just down tiered, so they have reduced some of the stats, obviously. Which is fair enough, right? But quite frankly, it's not going to be the tank for most people. It's okay, but it's it's bad in a lot of ways, and it's not really got much that shines for it. And really, it's going to be one that's for British tank lovers that have to have every single British tank, or tank collectors, pretty much. If you, my main thought on this basically is if you earn the British Bulldog for free the other week in the earn up. You don't need to buy this tank because the British Bulldog does what this tank does, but about the same or a little bit better, quite frankly. This is probably about on par with that tank. So if you earn it for free, discount this tank, you don't have to buy it. Is it worth the 10,000 on the Prime Bundle? Hell no, never in a million years. Is it worth the 7,000 gold loaded bundle? Not really. Is it worth the 4,000 gold? Probably not. Wait till discount, get it for like 2k gold if they sell it for like 50% off. Because I think tier 6 tends to get 50% off sales for tier 5. Or it might be 30%, I can't remember. But yeah, you'll, you'll get it for like 2 to 3k gold, which is probably more around its price if you want this tank. Because honestly, the 3k skin that you do get with it, to be fair is really damn nice i think they did a fantastic job with the skin and the tank looks absolutely fantastic but in the way it plays it's it's especially bottom tier is absolutely horrendous there's a lot of tanks when they are bottom tier where they're kind of they can stand their ground obviously they're not built to face tier eight say if they're a tier six but they can stand the ground and they can do quite a lot anyway if you play them a certain way this tank because of how slow it is and the way the gun handles with the DPM and stuff, it's just not uh, its just not that great. And it really, really struggles at tier 8. And that's the other thing, is the fact that probably the British Bulldog is on par with this tank, maybe a little bit better, and that has pref. This doesn't have pref, and it probably really needed it. It's just not that good when it is bottom tier. So, let's go through the stats. So, the stats of this tank... 171 penetration on its AP rounds and 239 on its premium APCR rounds. Now this penetration is fantastic. It's the 17 pounder gun that you get on the Firefly. It's a fantastic gun and 171 pen is going to be enough for every tank you see at tier 6 and 7 and for some tier 8s. And 239 pen is enough for everything else you're ever going to see. So this penetration on this gun is fantastic. That is one standout feature of the tank that is great. 150 damage with the rate of fire that is 5.3 seconds base, which you get down to about 3.9 seconds. It's not that great. There's a lot of tanks that are starting to do 250 alpha for like, you know, eight, seven, eight second reloads. Maybe quicker than that now, 6.0. And you're ability to trade isn't quite great what you really need to do is catch people out that have long reloads try and get them to bounce on your armor which can be relatively bouncy but at the same time it's kind of troll rather than bouncy and then just wreck them with a good with a decent rate of fire and that's the way that the black prince works as well as this tank and 190 damage on its he rounds by the way this he round is pretty pretty poo it's not going to be that useful in most situations because a lot if most tanks that you'll be able to pen with that HE rounds will be artillery a lot of the artillery at that point start to get like 200 hit points 240 hit points which means you can be two shot in them anyway so there's no point using this and chancing the fact that you might not pen you may as well just load full of AP and APCR and just have at it with that 900 hit points there's a lot of tier 7s that will probably two shot you three shot you even and that's something you've got to be wary of. But it's about average for the tier. A lot of tanks at this tier have like between 800, 900 and 1,000 hit points. And 1,000 being the upper limit. So that's about average for the tier. That's, yeah, fine. 
20 kilometers an hour at top speed is where it is really slow. It's very, 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 very slow. And that's one of the reasons it really, really struggles against tier 8. If you've played the Black Prince, you'll know how slow it is. This is even slower. May have the same top speed, but the worst engine power does damage it. And it damages its track traverse as well. 360 meters on the vision, on the view range, which is quite blind. So you will need to run, run optics and vents with the cruise skill situational awareness to try and get that above 450. Because this is one of those things, this is one of those tanks that if it gets out of spotter when you're crossing the open, you're doomed. You will die and you won't get anywhere very quickly. If you get spotted, you want to be spotting what is spotting and shooting you. Being blind in a tank that's this slow is not a good thing. So just be wary of that, that that's not that great. Concealment 12% for a heavy tank, that's randomly pretty decent, but it's a heavy tank, so you don't really pay attention that much to the steel concealment. So you have got 11.32 rounds a minute rate of fire, which is, like I say, 5.3 base and about 3.9 when you've got it fully pimped out with my setup that you'll see in the garage section. You can get that obviously lower by activating food and get it to like 3.6, 3.7. Again, it's not the slowest reload in the world for 150, but when you're getting tanks that are fully pimped out, getting close to this reload with 250, it's a, yeah, you start to feel it, especially when they start to out-trade you very, very easily. And it, yeah, it becomes a bit of a problem. 2.5 second aim time is quite slow for this gun. It, you do feel it at times when you pull up and stop. You feel like the aim bloom is going for quite a bit, and it's, it's a bit of a problem, just a little bit. 0.37 accuracy as well is not the best, which is where you get all the accuracy skills. It does make it 6.0 accuracy where it still hits most of its shots, but 0.37 just isn't that nice generally. If it had more like 0.35, it'd be a lot better. 8 degrees of gun depression. That's fantastic. That's great for this tank. That works. So it means at least you're not like the Churchill 7, for instance, where you hit a small rock and your gun just shoots in the air because... You hit a small rock and you've got no gun depression. It's a bit of a problem for the, for the Churchill 7, not for the Black Prince. That 8 degrees is not bad. So, armor, way, armor ways. The way the armor holds up. 152 on the turret, 95 on the side, 102 on the rear of the turret. So let's have a look at the Black Prince armor layout. It's exactly the same as it is on PC, so we're using Tanks GG. You've got 150 on this lower bar and 152 on this upper bar the turret this is the major difference between a tank like the tier 7 black prince the tier 7 black prince's turret front is like 250 effective or 250 without being effective it's like that's the base rate it's really really good turret on the tier 7 not on this tank the amount of tanks that will just see you and blap you through this gun mantlet is just mental. And it disregards all your hull armor, basically. Because this hull armor is decent. It's the same as the tier 7. So you do bounce a fair bit off of it, especially when you're top tier. When you're top tier, this armor can be pretty damn decent. And you're facing like Shermans and things. But when you're facing more like the Russian tanks and the tanks that have like 170 pen, this this is butter. And that's where you start to angle and you can side scrape and stuff quite effectively. But the thing is when you start side scraping, even when you've got the turret facing round, people that have got 250 odd pen, not even that, if, you, well, if, if you're a tier 8, a lot of tier 8s will destroy that 209 pen lot, 210. But a lot of the tanks that have got tier 7, that are premium rounds are 217 pen, right? Even they will just destroy this bit here that should be a no chance pen, right? So you've just got to be wary that this turret is garbage and it disregards a lot of the armor that you can have. Like I say, with the actual Black Prince, you could side scrape like this and they have no hope of penning you because even if they catch the side of your turret like that, where that is, they'll bounce because the turret's fantastic. Not on this. And this that really lets this tank down. Really, really lets it down. The one thing you've got to be careful of as well is the same as the Black Prince. There's a little spot here, look, where they can just pen you. Even though you're angled pretty decently, they will just pen it. So you just got to be careful that you can catch shots there, and that is really annoying, generally. 
26 degrees a second traverse speed on the turret is not too bad. It means you can out traverse the tracks at least, which has got an abysmal 18 degrees a second. I think it's 20 degrees a second on the actual tier 7 black print, so that 2 degrees a second worse is not nice especially with the horsepower well the engine the engine's a little bit worse you just it struggles to it does feel really slow when it's turning so light tanks do get around you and you can't keep up with them with your traverse sometimes and that is an absolute pain so you've got 12 horsepower per ton which isn't too bad for a heavy tank but with 600 horsepower and that like i say it just feels sluggish and you don't actually reach that 20 kilometers an hour top speed you just sit on 19 220 it keeps flickering so you don't actually really hit that and that is an annoying annoying thing so you just got to be careful of that you've got a 12 kilometer an hour reverse speed as well which actually isn't all that bad honestly 12 kilometers an hour reverse speed is pretty decent it could be worse you could be going at like eight but at the same time you will struggle to go back round corners if you make a mistake and because of how slow you are it can be a pain but yeah overall the Black Prince A43 is a tank that is not really worth picking up, quite honestly. I wouldn't say to pick it up. It's definitely a collector's tank. So as always, everybody, I'm going to send you over to the replay, well, to the garage section where you can see the commander skills. You can see the crew setup, the equipment setup, all of that good, lovely, good stuff. So I'll see you in the garage. So here we are in the garage with the A43 Black Prince prototype premium. And this is the skin for the tank. Now the skin on this tank looks pretty damn impressive. If I'm honest, I really like the skin on this thing. Makes it look really cool. The only thing for those that like having their MOEs on the barrel, I'm not sure where the MOE is going to go on this. I don't know. You probably won't be able to see it. It'll be covered by the skin, but hey, not everyone cares about the MOE, right? They do care about the look of the tank, and to be honest, the look of the tank is pretty awesome. And it does just look like exactly like a Black Prince. So, let's get into the equipment setup. I run Rammer, Optics, and Vents. Now, say, for instance, on the actual Black Prince, I run Advanced Armor. That's because this A43 has less view range than the standard Black Prince. So, I pretty much run vents instead of the advanced armour because of the fact that I want to get the view range as high as possible. And the vents really helps you do that with the food and the optics. If it had like 10 or 20 metres extra view range, like the Black Prince at tier 7, it could run the advanced armour quite easily. Obviously, every shot that you take is one less or two less shots of damage that you're going to be take shooting out in this A43. So, that advanced armour basically can really help especially if you put it in with the crew skill so that's one thing that you could run i mean at the end of the day you could drop the vents and run that instead quite easily don't th this is a point the, these these because this tank is extremely slow that 20 kilometers an hour is slow and it does struggle to get up to that top speed these speed equipment don't help okay the max that you will get up to is 23 kilometers an hour. Let's put them on and I'll show you. The max speed is 23. You get three extra kilometers an hour from both. And for that, you'd have to drop stuff like vents, which makes your DPM better, as well as the whole tank better. And the optic, which boosts your view range higher and makes it just generally better as well. For being able to spot for yourself. Don't put these, view these speed equipment on because they're just not effective for slow tanks like this and this is i'm going to make the point as well that don't ever buy this primed package okay this is this primed package is a scam it's a massive scam for 10k gold because the traction system the powertrain because what you're paying for basically with this primed version is the seven days of premium but not just that is the three pieces of equipment that they put on for you now the advanced armor isn't is, is something that you could run so that's fine the traction system and the powertrain, you just don't, you can't, there's no point running on it. So that, don't get that prime version. If you're going to do it, get the loaded or just wait for the base bundle. The base bundle is like 4K. Wait for that one. But yeah, I run rammer, vents and optics because that just, 
generally makes the tank all round better. And like I say, you don't want you want to be able to spot for yourself because getting out spotted in something like this, which is slowing, maybe you're moving from cover to cover or changing positions, and you get out spotted out in the open. Yeah, that's just generally death. So you want to be careful of that. In terms of the crew skills, it's exactly what I'd run on the Black Prince, which is born leader, rapid loading, trap mechanic, sixth sense, situational awareness, steady aim, run and gun, snapshot, and armor angling. Born leader, obviously because you want to make your tank 10% better generally, that's good. You want your DPM to be as good as possible because this thing doesn't have the fastest reload for 150 alpha. So making it as good as possible is what you want. Track mechanic, obviously you want to get your tracks back. If you get tracked, you, do, you don't want to be sitting around for too long. So track mechanic helps repair that. Six cents, you always don't want to know when you're spotted. Always, always, always. Situational awareness, boost the view range 6% as much as possible, definitely. Steady aim, run and gun, and snapshot. Just make the gun as good as possible because it's got to be the standout feature and it isn't that good of a gun. So to make it the standout feature of the tank, you really need these three perks. So that Because especially the fact that there's times where you will just need to keep moving in the Black Prince to try and keep up with a fight. So having something like run and gun is really going to be helpful that you need to keep moving and you can just keep hitting those shots on the move. And you'll see that in some of the replays. And you, know, you can keep hitting those shots on the move with this perk and that and the snapshot obviously just making the gun better on the rotation and the steady aim as well you need those gun perks and then the other one i take is armor angling because i just want to reduce the amount of damage i'm taking as much as possible like i say this is where you could use advanced armor paired with the armor angling to reduce it by 10 percent but reducing it by five percent even is nice because you know if you're reducing it by like 40 50 damage that you're taking from every shot eventually that adds up to at least an extra shot two three you know so that's why i run the armor angling but yeah the, that's that's what i run for the crew setup and the equipment setup for the a43 black prince prototype yeah i i don't think it's a tank that that's worth picking up if you've got the british bulldog the british bulldog's just a tank that's probably a little bit better honestly but you know as always I'm going to send you over to the replays where you might be able to watch it and go, you know what, that guy's talking a load of crap. I like the looks of that tank. I'm going to buy that thing. Or you might go, yeah, he's right. That, that doesn't look fun. I'm not going to pick that tank up because I already have the British Bulldog, which we earned for free. So as always, everybody, I'll send you over to the replays. Enjoy them. So here we are in the replays with the A43 Black Prince. And yeah, take in just how slow this tank is. It's, it's very slow. It's... One of the, it is definitely probably the biggest downside of the tank, that 20 kilometers an hour top speed. And the thing is, with that horsepower you see in here, look, if I'm on a flat, this is a perfectly flat level ground, this is the perfect terrain for the Black Prince to be cruising along on. And we just cannot stay at 20 kilometers an hour. It just flicks between 19 and 20, and it's one of the biggest problems with it. As well as that, the track traverse is definitely slow. Like, the track traverse is not much better on the standard Black Prince, the Tech Tree one, but you do feel that you can swivel, and you can swivel about quickly enough to, like, get around light tanks and things like that, and obstacles. This one, the track traverse is definitely quite slow, and just, you do notice it quite a lot when you're, like, especially if you've played the Black Prince, and you know what the Black Prince is like. Playing this one, you do notice a lot of the differences, and it is annoying. And it's just one of those ones where, as well, like, you think, oh, I'll play that at the Black Prince, I'll get onto the side scraping area, and then you just get penned through the turret, or just through this, you know, just, you get penned. It's really annoying. But, we're on Kaunas, or Kauna, I don't know, I think it's Kaunas, anyway. That's how you say it, I think, maybe. Don't kill me for the butchering of the name. And I'm thinking, right, where I'm going to go? I'm going to go to around D4-5 because there I can get cross shots at anyone who goes along the A line and in that way I can try and make the most of the decent decent-ish rate of fire now this game is we are horrendously bottom tier and this is a sort of atypical game of what happens for me when I've been playing this tank bottom tier is it, you know this is probably the best result I could, I've had while being bottom tier in this tank and it's not even that great I thought I'd just show it to show, yeah, bottom tier is, is, is not good. This is a tank that would probably be way better with plus one, minus one, because at the same, you know, when you're facing tier eights in this tank, you just, well, you basically have zero chance. 
you have the pen. You have one, you know, with the 171 AP pen and the 239 premium pen, you can pen pretty much every tier eight you're ever going to face, and that's fine. It's just the fact that they're going to pen you, and for the most part, they're pr most tier eights are probably going to three shot you, and yeah, that's that's a bit of a problem. And they tend to have a very, s well, I say very similar. When we have a 3.9 base reload, right? I say base reload, fully pimped. Tanks will, you will hit them for 150 every 3.9 seconds. And then you'll come against stuff like CS-52 Leaks, which you'll see later on, which will pen me for 320 every 6 seconds or so. So for every 2 shots I'm putting in for nearly 300, nearly, they're putting in the same as me for 1 shot. And most of the time, if they manage to limit their engagement range as well, and limit their engagement chances, you will only ever get one shot into them for 150, they'll get one into you for 300 for trading. That's the word I'm looking for. And that can be a pain. So, in this game, in Countess as well, what has happened is basically, they've completely, and I mean completely, decimated the other flank. They've crushed it in no time at all. And my time... Of trying to drive to this position at D45 and then thinking you know what I could try and push through the middle and get behind these guys yeah there's no hope I've had to turn around we've only done 587 damage and now I've got to try and get back to the base as quickly as I can in a tank that's yeah it's very slow so we're gonna try and get back there and go this way round the corner because this way if I catch anything because the minute they're not capping and I'm fearing that they're gonna cap so the fact that they're not capping at the minute makes me think I might be able to catch some people out as they're crossing in the open. We've got the guys on the right that I'll be able to get shots at. And just as I'm about to go around the corner, we catch this Leo out. So we get a nice shot snapped in. We get a tracking shot on him, which is nice. The CS-52 misses us as he goes across. And it looks like we're going to be able to finish off this Leo. Luckily enough, the Leo misses. He actually had the small gun, the 75 centimeter, so he only had 140 odd pen, which is why he struggled to pen my turret, because the turret's only like 152 effective, like I showed. So with his stand around, he struggled. This 52 leaks, however, is not always going to struggle, but I managed to get around the corner angled enough there that because of the way that the Black Prince's hull is, that there's a lot of spaces where if they just misjudge it and get a shot into the tracks, they will track and pen. Now, I tried to get around the corner there to snap a shot to finish off the 52 leads because he's the big danger. I wasn't that bothered about this Achilles. But to be honest, I under-appreciated his gun on the Achilles. And I think actually the Achilles has the same gun that I've got, which means he's actually going to easily pen me. It's just because he bounced the first two rounds that I went, oh, this is all right. The Atomic manages to get a shot into the back of us. I try and snap a shot in. Unfortunately, ends up ricocheting. I must have hit his turret. He's hard aiming us very much there, which means I'm not going to get the chance to go around and kill him. But they're about to cap, and I'm thinking, I can't sit and wait, right? That 52 lease, I know, is going to be waiting on the corner. I've got a chance it. And unfortunately, he ended up finishing us off. The pressure on the cap meant that I had to really try and go. Otherwise, I'd have just sat there and waited for them to cap and would have lost. And, yeah, I was not really wanting to do that. So I just took the risk and the 2 leagues finishes off. But we only managed 2k in that game. And that really was the best game I've had bottom tier in this tank. And which I've had a lot of bottom tier games. I've, I've pretty much not had many games where I'm top tier. The matchmaking in the games I've played have been exactly like this one and the next one. Where there's like 4, 5, 6 tier 7s. A couple of tier 6s and then a couple of tier 5s. I'm not having where it's just tier 6 and tier 5. Which is where this tank will thrive. This tank will thrive in those matchups where you're seeing like sh lots of Shermans with 78, 75mm guns sorry, and stuff like that, which have got like 128 pen. Basically, any tank that you're coming against, which is quite a lot of them at tier 6, where they've got you know, the 130, 140 pen, you're going to bounce them. You're going to do quite well against those tanks, and you've got a decent rate of fire to face those tanks. But as soon as you get against tanks at tier 7, 8, they just destroy you. This is... And this is one of the reasons why this tank is not worth picking up. Because a British Bulldog does the same job. Everybody earned the British Bulldog for free. And you just get crushed by your bottom tier or even mid tier for the most part. So, yeah. So the second game we're on, Ronsan River. And we're going to go to the position at G4. 
five just to try and get up here get some shots at the people crossing to get onto the k-line and you're seeing stuff like the t3485 there the losers m4 a2 trying to cross in unfortunately we missed the shot on the losers here i'm actually quite surprised i'm not getting spotted i'm not gonna lie we get a shot into the egg panzer 4 he gets destroyed and now this t3485 like i say this t3485 i'm quite surprised he's not spotting us and then we do get spotted and that's actually because i think the td just below us we shut down the T3485, now we get a nice shot into the KV85. Well, the KV85 is something that if I hit it in the tracks, I will track and pen it first time. He does get tracked in a good position for us, so we're just going to start pummeling the shots in, especially since we're unspotted, so we may as well. We managed to finish him off, and now we've got this KV2 in the background, so we're going to start popping shots at this KV2 as much as possible. This is the dreamland for the Black Prince, and for any gun with that's any tank that's slow with a decent rate of fire on the gun. That we've just got multiple shot. We've got shot discretion, right? We've got multiple targets to keep shooting. We don't have to move anywhere. This is the perfect scenario for it. We're getting some nice shots in. We couldn't quite finish off the KV2, so we went for the T34 there. We're going to aim for the Capola on the 88. We actually aimed a little bit too high there, but we got lucky that RNG took the shell in. We ricochet off his side, which is unfortunate, but he's going to get back behind cover, which means we're not going to do it. Then we notice at the last second that was timing that there's an SU-152 directly behind us. He's got the 122, which means he's actually going to reload about half a second quick slower than we do. 390. That rate of fire on the SU-152 with the 122 is ridiculously quick, and you just got to be aware of that. He YOLO'd in, which, like I say, meant that he was going to reload quicker than was. So we just duped past him to try and make him go past and finished him off. Now this Rampanz is popping up to get shots at us. I'm not too fussed about him because he is one of those tanks with one of those guns that is going to struggle unless he's firing premium two penners. And even with premium, he might bounce the odd shot. And you're seeing he is bouncing here. Get a nice shot into his side. He's just sitting there. Felt. This is it. Which... <sighs> We tried to sit and aim the shot into his drive wheel there, and that was really unfortunate because we wanted to track it, because again, he's one of those that we could probably track first time. And if we tracked him in position, that would have been a lot of assistance for us and been nice. We get a nice shot blind into the SU-100 M1, and then the Rampanz is coming over. So we get another shot into his upper plate, because the Rampanz, with 171 pen on this gun on the A43, you're not, you're not gonna worry. You're not gonna be worried about firing at a Panzer 5.4. It's never gonna happen that you're going to bounce that is you're never really going to bounce although i say that we just bounced on a hellcat like the thing's made of paper <laughs> spitting kleenex is what that tank is made of and we somehow bounced on it yeah reasons the rampanza is trying to come over to finish us off yeah get out of here mr rampanza nice try and then we're just going to try and move forward to get some shots at this hellcat which unless he tries to poke at us which he just does. We get a nice shot on the move. This is where I'm talking about run and gun. Because we want, we don't want to stop there and try and aim at this Hellcat. We want to try and keep moving forward. To try and get in a position where we could try and get a shot at the SUM-1. And get into a position where we can catch this Hellcat out a little bit better. So if we'd stopped there, we'd have given him an easier shot. An easier target to hit. And we might have missed anyway. So having the run and gun perk on to be able to help us with the shots on the move and hit target it's like that hellcat is exactly why you want to be running it and obviously having the snapshot as well and having the steady aim to just increase the accuracy of the gun that all helps in that regard in trying to help shoot things as you're going along but anyway that we finished that game with three kills 3k damage 686 assists that's 3.7k combined ace tanker high caliber 1867 base xp like i say three kills a nice game for the a43 black prince and i say it's a, it's a decent it's a, it's a decent heavy for tier six but the problem is it's one that just cannot stand up to be bottom tier it really really struggles in that regard so we're into the third game and the final game and we're on fisherman's bay and we're in a match matchup again where there's five tier sevens and we're just going to do what we can and that is trundle into the town because that's probably the best place for something like the black prince on fisherman's bay because we could patrol the midridge right i say patrol you can't really patrol in a tank that doesn't move very well we could go to the midridge and try and get shots and spot out at anything crossing but by the time we get to the midridge in the black print or in the a43 the likelihood is the tanks have probably already crossed over and you're just not going to get a shot at it. So that is one thing that obviously 
is better about this? Like the, okay, we'll go through this. The British Bulldog is flat out better than this tank because it's a Churchill 7, but without any of the weaknesses of the Tech Tree Churchill 7 because it gets the extra gun depression, it gets the better reload. It's just better as a, as a tank than the actual Tech Tree Churchill 7. This tank is better <laughs> than the Churchill 7. Honestly, this, is pro this probably would have been a better Tech Tree tank that leads us up to the Black Prince, but then again, it is basically a Black Prince, but stock. That's what it feels like anyway. So, it is better than the Tech Tree Churchill 7. So, if you're thinking, oh, it's just going to be worse than the Churchill 7. Or it's just another Churchill 7 at tier 6. You know, in terms of the way it is. It's not quite true. It is better than that. Because as well as that, you know, having the 8 degrees of gun depression helps. Or 7 degrees, whichever way it is. And... Yeah, that, that means it's usable. Like, that Churchill 7 with its 3 degrees of gun depression. Ew. Just absolute ew. This, yeah, it means you can get to a ridge line and use it. So, this game on Fisherman's Bay has turned a little bit sour in the fact that they've got a lot of tanks in front of me. And I've not got much help. I've got one tank, heavy tank that's coming towards us. So what I've got to do is try and angle up on this corner as best as I can. That Lowe's has decided to run off. Because he is one that is going to struggle with penning us. He's decided to leave. Now that setter is yellowing in round the back. And it's like, okay, I, I don't want to leave this going. I want to get a shot into him in case he tries to get some shots into the back of me. But then a B, no, a KV-1S, sorry, comes round and drops a shot into us. We YOLO around the corner to get a shot into him. And we get fairly lucky there. We don't get penned by the other two tanks. I shouldn't have gone around the corner like that. That was a bit of a mistake. I should have hit this corner and then angled up and then tried to side scrape out exactly like I am now. And now we're getting some shots into this KV-1S. We're trying to finish him off. We do finish him off. Now we've got a KV-85 that's coming for us. Now this guy's a bit of a worry because he has the 122mm gun, which means that I know once he's fired, I will wreck his day because he, that reload on that gun is atrocious. And that means that I will pen him... And probably take his life for his one shot. Now we get him down to 52 hit points. But he manages to get behind the dead KV-1S. Which is unfortunate. We're now getting shot by the losers. So we're just going to hit this building in front of us. And angle up a little bit better. We snap a shot in. The BDR is trying to get shots into us. He is stocked by the way. Which is really helpful. Because that gun on that tank stock is not great. The KV-85 is trying to aim up a shot at us. We finish him off. And we're just going to side scrape out for this BDR. And he is bouncing. We've got the Black Prince friend that's finally turned up to help us. I say finally. He's a Black Prince just like me. He's slow, right? He's, he's going to struggle to get here at the same time as me. The KB-13 gets spotted for the first time. Popping out of that side there. So I decided to try and angle up a little bit more. Keep moving. Get some shots into the BDR and finish him off. Now the KB-13 sorry, is moving across. Fortunately enough... We get one or two shots into him. We unfortunately ricochet off the Lozer's M42 Sher A2 Sherman. But we do track him in place because this gun is high enough caliber to just track him in one go. Finish him off. We just drive around the corner. Pop a shot into his lower plate. He gets penned by someone else and we finish him off. And that is it. That was the ideal game for the A43 Black Prince. That was the ideal game. That was perfect. The tanks that were facing it could, struggled really with it to pen, and we managed to shut down the tanks that would really harm us. So we finished that game with 5 kills, 3.8k damage, 396 assist, ace tanker, sniper medal, high caliber, steel wall, 2.2k base XP. Yeah, a really nice game for the A43. But on the whole, this tank is probably one that you should miss out on. You know, this is probably a collector's tank. If you have most tanks and you really like the look of this tank and you want to pick it up just because it looks great, go for it. But if you already have the British Bulldog from earning it for free, yeah, don't bother with it, okay? It's, it's not that great. So as always, everybody, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. A great success!